it's me, Mikey Pipes. Thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone is well. Hope everyone is safe. Going to a service call. Customer has a Burnham gas-fired steam boiler, and apparently it's leaking water. Hopefully he doesn't need a new one. We were there a few years ago. We put in some valves because he had no heat in the basement. It's got a hydronic heating zone with a circulator. So hopefully he doesn't have a cracked heat exchanger. Let's see. Make sure you thumbs up and let me get your thoughts and feedback at the conclusion of the video. Let's go. How are you, sir? No complaints. What brings me here today? Uh, Let's go see. I haven't been here in a while. Sydney? Yeah. Uh, this right here. So. Let me see if there's a bit of a pair. Oh, it's got wet, huh? <laughs> so we uh, we changed the circuitry pump, right? The circuitry pump. Okay. And then I turned that off, and when I put it back on, we have water just where everywhere. So what happened? It just went straight into it went into the radiators. Okay. And it, and it just kept spilling. So what did you do? Uh, I turned it off and I turned everything out of there. And that's why you're here. So you have too much water in the system. So out of the radiator air valves, those silver things on the yeah, side, you exactly. have water coming out of there? Mm -hmm. First and second floor? or Yeah. <laughs> what happened immediately prior to that? When did this occur? Um, I think it was two years ago. So just out of the blue, you just noticed water coming out of the... Yeah, because when, um, once, once, uh, once the, when I put back on the burner, it just started and it wouldn't stop. So before the water came out of the radiator, you turned on the boiler. So what did you do? Because you just said you turned on the boiler. Yeah, because... When? No, I, I turned off because we was changing that. So we had to turn off the electric thing. The circulator? Yeah. You changed the circulator. Right. So you turned off the boiler. Right. Turned it back on. Right. And then shortly thereafter, water was coming out of all the radiators. Yeah, all the radiators. Like immediately after, like same day or a couple days later? Exactly. Exact same, same day. day. Yeah. And that green valve right there. Was that closed or was that left open? It was open. When you went down here when the water was flooding? Yeah, it was open. I think you answered the question yourself. You know what that valve does? With the, the manual feet? Right? Yes. If this was open, you, when you, if you saw water pouring out of the radiators, you panic, you come down here. This was open? Yeah, it was open, so yes. we should have Actually, yeah, I shut off the main water. So, uh, but if this was open, who opened it? Uh, Unknown caller. Who opened the valve? I did. Okay. And you didn't close it? No. And you flooded the house? Yeah. So it's your fault. There's nothing wrong with the boiler. There's nothing wrong with the boiler. If you open this valve, right, like I have it right now, right, the boiler is filling with water. Right. And it's not going to stop filling with water until you close that. It's a manual bypass or it's a manual fill valve. You have an automatic valve here as well, right, right which automatically, this should normally open, right, which normally gives the boiler water as needed. Let's just close this. Let's see if the water level increases. You may need some service here, but we'll see. He's open? Yep.
Let's see. So nothing is rising yet. Let me get some tools from the truck and see what's going on. Halfway filled. This stays closed. This can stay open if you want to use the automatic water feed. I happen to not be a fan of these. Sometimes they fail, and they fail when it's open. Like it senses there's no water, and it doesn't shut off. Um, and that normally gets a signal from the low water cutoff to stay on. So if that ever malfunctions, saying there's no water, this is going to keep beating until you see water coming out of your radiators. But in this case, if this valve is on, open, like right now it's off, if this is open, the boy is going to fill the boiler and then all the piping until someone turns it off. Make sense? All right. So before we do it, I'm just going to go over this one more time. You have this hot water loop at the bottom of your boiler to heat the basement with a zone. Normally with steam, you know, steam goes up. Right. So whatever's above us, you can heat with steam. Whatever's below, you really can't. So people do, people, you know, uh, one cheap way of doing this is taking water from the bottom of the boiler. This is the left side, the right side. So this circulator is going to take water from the boiler and it's going down. There's an arrow on this. So it's leaving the boiler, going through the loop, through all the baseboard you have, coming back and returning over here where you have a valve and a drain. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this, but it's very important that you do it step by step because if you mess up, you can introduce the water that's in this pipe into your water heater. And you don't want that because then you'll contaminate the water and it's not a good thing. Okay? So, here's a hose. I'm going to attach that to the bottom of the water heater. Here's the other side, and we're going to attach that there. Nice and snug. Now, you have a hose right here, which I am going to connect. Oh, you already did it for me. All right. So, and this hose is going into the shower. Right. Now, this water is going to be filthy, by the way. Okay. So, either move it somewhere else, like into a toilet, or outside. Uh, you good? Yeah. It's okay. It's already messed up, so I'll, <laughs> I'll clean that later. All right. Okay. I'm going to open up this first. You need a flat screwdriver. And if, when you use a hose and the, this leaks or that leaks, it's, it's not tight enough. Okay. Or the washer is missing. Okay. The hose is the same pressure as what's in the tank. Right. Let's say 50, 60 PSI. On this other side, you have a ball valve. I'm closing the ball valve. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to open up that one so now the hose is connected to the open drain but really nothing's flowing through there yet and then i'm going to close this this is to isolate this side of the pipe now we're going to open this up better wash that hose how's it look give it some time it's coming See, I wasn't exaggerating. You're going to have a mess to clean up. Oh, I warned you. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be that bad. <laughs> I warned you. Oh, my God. We're going to let that run until it's clear. Okay. All right? But all of that junk is what's fouling up your circulators. Okay. Now, hopefully, maybe you just have something stuck in your brand new circulator you put in, like in the, in the impeller or the cartridge. Okay. Hopefully, you do, but we're going to we'll figure, we'll find out, because if not... Then, because I'm gonna, once we're done with this, we're gonna open up this valve and close the other one and just force some water through it. Just a little bit. And hopefully that'll free it up. But you wanna do this like twice, maybe three times during the, uh, the winter. Now, while that's still running, we're gonna close this drain. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna close it fully yet. But I wanna close. I want to close this right now. And now 
I'm gonna close this drain. So now when I open up this, with this open, we're gonna force some water through the circulator and watch the water level increase. Like that. And she's going through there, okay. So I'm closing this. Okay, we're gonna close this. It's very important to close that first because you don't want any potential dirty water going into your domestic potable water. Now, we're gonna open up this valve here. And you're done. You gotta take the hose off. But let's turn on that circulator and see if she circulates. All right, I hope you enjoyed that instructional video. Uh, if you have a steam boiler, you know, the, the one thing you must do on a monthly basis is drain it. And you're testing to confirm that the low, low water cutoff, LWCO, uh, senses a low water condition and prevents the boiler from operating. And if you have a hydronic zone off the bottom of that steam boiler, you can also need to flush it out. Uh, fortunately for that particular client, a number of years ago, we put in those valves and we showed him how to flush it out. And um, regrettably, he hasn't been doing that and killed the circulator. And fortunately, I got the circulator up and running by back flushing it and it started to work. So hopefully it didn't cause any irreparable harm to it, but nonetheless, we got it up and running. Hope you enjoyed this instructional video. If you did, make sure you thumbs up the video. And if you want to support the channel, consider subscribing. There's no cost or obligation. And if you want to get post notifications, hit that alarm bell. Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. I already know what you guys are going to say about you're risking cross-contamination. Yes, you are. If you don't follow those steps, step by step. Could you be taking a step further and add a uh, flow check on that garden hose? Absolutely. And if you really want to play it safe, that's what you would do. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.